Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the final nine holes of the 2023 Crush on the Concho presented by Lone Star Disc. Shout out to Low Putt Disc Golf Club for all the work that they put in to put this event together. My name is Joel Freeman, and I'm joined here by my good friend in the booth, Casey White. It is good to be here, and we are in the final nine holes of this tournament, and we have an absolute heater at the top of the leaderboard. Emerson Keith, nine down through nine to catch up and tie your scorching hot weekend so far. Tied ball game, man. Like, I came in to this round with a five-stroke lead, and I'm not even playing that bad. Like, I'm I've had a you know a couple little hiccups, but I'm not playing that bad. I'll say this: I don't feel like I'm playing that bad, and you and I are tied. Yeah, he's just out of this world right now. Yeah, Emerson is shredding right now. So here we are, whole whole sorry, whole ten, uh, and the drone just missed the man. So we got to go left side, um, and it's a little skinny. There's trees on the right and water on the left. Um, but Eagles in play, mm -hmm. and especially with the wind that we're facing right now, we got, um, you know, a little bit of a left to right, a little bit of tail, um, and so ideal for blasting big distance shots. The only trouble here throwing the distance driver backhand is the trees really don't allow for the natural flight of a right-hand backhand flex shot. Yeah, yeah, Emerson was trying to get cute here, but... Um, Really testing that left side. I think his disc just barely hung on. We could see a little bit of the ground plane. It looked like it checked up. I'm trying to do kind of a late flip, but it's really, it's really just like how much do you want to test that big distance shot? Uh, and I really want to err on the side of flipping it too much as opposed to leaving it into the water on the left side. So uh, I'm ultimately happy with that. A little low, but um, but yeah, we're smooth sailing. If this fairway lines up for anybody's flight of the disc, it would be Blake's 100%. Yeah. Big skip. Probably exactly how he drew it up. Yep. Blasted sidearm, caught a nice edge, and boom, he's uh, CTP so far. Mm -hmm. I really liked your line, so that's basically exactly what I'm trying to copy. Looking good, but I tagged a late branch. Yeah. Yeah, common result there um, just from the air shot. But I still like the air shot because even if you do hit these trees, boom, you got that opportunity to do this. This mm -hmm. was a really nicely thrown shot. Yep, I'm just blasting my just send it DD3. Basically just as far as I can do it, trying to get my up shot to the easiest position I can. Okay, so Emerson, yes, he barely held on. But you're seeing where he's throwing from is actually the two-meter relief he was given from where his disc actually landed at the very, very edge of that cliff, like yep. inches away from disaster. Uh, literally, you know, you're talking like four inches more, and his disc was lost. Lost, um, absolutely. I blast out a nice backhand here. This this thing's getting nice distance. This was a, a good shot. But, uh, but yeah, the TD put in to a special rule into play uh, where you get two meters off because that bank is so you know, sketchy and dangerous. Not only is it sketchy because of the steepness, but there's a million different cacti and thorns that can just really mess you up if you're trying to play from the edge of that hill while not trying to fall into the into the water off yeah. the edge. Yeah. So Blake went for this really dramatic flex line. It didn't quite catch edge. It was almost perfect. Um, but really the name of the game on this hole is just don't make any huge mistakes. Mm -hmm. As long as you just make progress each shot, you should have some sort of look for birdie. So everyone's doing their job so far. Yeah, I was kind of torn on whether or not I wanted to go forehand or backhand there. I ended up choosing backhand MD4. And Emerson is doing basically what I was terrified of doing and putting himself behind possibly the only object in the way on the green. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it looked like a pretty solid shot. And mm -hmm. he played it, you know, so that the wind would kind of carry it towards the basket. And just didn't quite do it. I'm given a half thought of kind of making this, but... You're just going to cash in on easy birdie instead. Yeah, just kind of erring on the side of safe. Emerson with a little bit of an Annie look through the tree. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of technicality there. Uh, but he's going to knock down that putt for to go 10 through 10. Keeping up the perfect pace. That's right. Blake to tap in. Nice little pitch putt here in the tailwind. Easy peasy. Good putt. If I can make mine, I think we're looking at a star frame, which from MPL lead card, as as we should, I would say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean, as much as I would love to, like, 
get real ambitious and really push for the eagle, especially in this wind, um, it's just not quite worth putting that water into play. And so, um, so I'm content with a four there. And yeah, all birdies on to hole 11. This is a pretty blank canvas hole. Like we said in the first round, it's so far out in the back of the property. It's just one of those holes you got to get back to where the rest of the course is somehow. So 700 feet wide open, nothing in the way. If somebody had the distance to reach this, there would be nothing stopping them. The difference is that we are human and we're just going to chop it up into two shots. Yeah. Yeah. Emerson playing kind of a hyzer here and uh, flirting with the trees, but he gets around and into a perfect spot. I really like the way that Emerson approached it because that wind is ripping from right to left. So there's no point in even trying to turn the disc over. You're not going to benefit in any way. Right. If you just keep it on the hyzer, let the wind stay underneath the flight plate, you're going to get the distance you're expecting. Maybe not as far as you could throw a big flex shot, but Blake has the favorable wind. Yep. Yep. Gets this out on a nice angle. <laughs> yep. Yep. And yeah, and mine came out perfect. I tr I tried to follow Emerson's line, like you said. Um, since that win is coming from right to left, and and you're doing the same play. Yep. It's like instead of turn it over and kind of lose height and like have that wind working against you, you just keep it on a hyzer, maybe stand it up to flat and let that wind work with you the whole time. I'm going MD five here, trusting it out wide. That skip definitely helped. That was a, that was a good correction. Your your upshot on the on round one was pr was pretty bad there. Yes, so that was that was a good little adjustment. Emerson's liking this this forehand, and he put himself wide enough that that that's an option. Yeah, because if you don't put yourself that wide, that tree on the on the left can kind of get in your way, and so that's why I I basically had no choice but to go with the overstable backhand. Yeah. I'm just going to make this. Oh, okay, just kidding. So um, but yeah, that was that was pretty close. I wasn't necessarily trying to run it, just trying to snuggle it up. Close. It was a it was a little surprise skip, I might <laughs> yeah, say. Yeah. Like we yeah. knew it was a good shot, but then it jumped in the air and yeah. pretty cool. Wind got up under it and Yep, and solid shot from Blake as well. We're all looking at birdies here. Emerson's about to go 11 through 11. Yeah, short putt away. It's just keeping it going, man. Talk about unrelenting. A little bit of a tester. Nothing to be messed with. And you know, you know what's funny? Like we've been talking about the wind this whole time, but like you kind of look around and nothing's moving. Yeah. And so <laughs> it's you know, Texas, it's the land of, of wind, right? So all these trees, all the all the plant life that you see, it it's built for the wind and mm -hmm. so it's it's very robust uh, and so i feel like it's not really showing it but trust yep. us guys it's hard it's hard it's very windy and disc golf's hard in the wind that's why i say those trees are still standing for a reason <laughs> yeah that's right okay so hole 12 uh island hole so there is technically a layup option um, but unless things get really dicey with the wind, I don't really see many players go into it. You're pretty much going to see people try to throw forehands. Um, there are a couple backhand options, but they're not as easy, not as clean. So Emerson's going to that same driver that he threw in the first round, but he went short the first round. Made sure to put a little more heat on it this time. Wow. Ooh. We thought that one was tracking. And then it almost rolls out of bounds. Yeah, nearly a perfect shot, and then just not a great reaction. Um, he's going to be around circle's edge, still looking for a birdie. So, you know, as long as you land safe, you're, you're, you're sitting all right. You're going for mostly the air shot. little skip at the end, but much more height than Emerson was dealing with. Yeah, a lot more height and, and, a, and a much better reaction from the ground. Um, yeah, it could have easily flared way off to the right and instead... It kind of skips straight. So that's fortunate for me. Talk about fortunate. I mean, that is the opposite mm -hmm. of fortunate. Yeah. Lake I mean, Sh yeah. guys are in for a, what looked to be an easy park job, just happened to plunk one of the last trees and actually keeps them outside the circle into the headwind. Definitely. Yeah. I was coming in on a really nice angle and just. I'm going low laser PD2. I was aiming to go <laughs> under the railing. The only problem is I tried to put more width on it than I got. Under the rail. That was sick. 
just like a low zipper. I was just trying to not mess with the wind. I was really, really worried that the wind was going to carry me too far to the left. <laughs> that that rail is like not more than two feet off the ground. It's barely taller <laughs> than our carts. That's incredible. All right, so Emerson, this is to go 12 through 12. Circle's edge from the knee. Oh, oh. my gosh. That looked solid out of the hand. It probably could have caught on a non-elevated basket in that spot. Sure. Well, and in... Right to left you know, wind. Say, say there's no wind and, yep. and bang, that's in. So I'm dealing with a little bit of a tailwind. Just a little bit too high out of my hand. Yeah, nearly got it to fall, but... Okay, so I'm finally going to gain my first stroke on Emerson this round. Wow. That is nerve-wracking. It is, man. Like, you're trying to close out a win and whatever, you know, and and what a, you know, I knew there was a lot of talent, you know, going on out here. And so I knew it wasn't going to be easy. I've played enough, you know, tournaments to know better than that. Um, but, man, like, talk about just coming out swinging. Emerson is definitely making my, my knees wobble a little bit. So, okay, so 289. Do you feel like that's... I feel like it's so false. It definitely plays farther than that. Uh, forehand is going to be the most popular option. That road is on the left, and you don't think it's really in play, but all of a sudden, that thing can just sneak right up and get you. Um, I liked this shot, but I, I knew I left it short. Yeah, and I don't think you could have done any better with the disc you chose. I think that the only thing you could have done was throwing yeah. something a little bit faster. Oh, and Emerson puts it into this tree. With the wind that we're dealing with, it's a strong right to left, and so you really do need to play it close to that tree in order to get close to the basket. Blake gets the right side of that tree and kicks towards the water. He remains safe, but a lot of work left for the for the hole. Yeah, so three shots already within a foot of that tree. Oh, I did the same thing. I basically mirror-imaged Emerson's shot. All four of us, you know, I... Mine almost hit the tree and barely got around, and and you guys all three make contact. That's that's crazy. I mean, I think that just speaks to, and, and what a great smooth up shot from Blake. I think that just speaks to how difficult this shape was to mm -hmm. create in in the these conditions. I feel like for me, the ideal shot I would like to throw here is something pretty overstable on a snap Annie, but with this amount of wind. I, I just got too scared to even think about the road and ch chose to hit a tree instead. Sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you needed to keep it on more of a, a strict hyzer mm -hmm. uh, on, in these conditions. So Emerson leaving a little bit to be desired, but still, you know, 22 feet. I've got this look for birdie. Boy. I, was, I was trying to get a little clever with the, like, anhyzer angle, mm -hmm. try not to let the wind pick it up and put it into the road. and. Mm -hmm. It was it wasn't a terrible putt, but also like you want to give it a better chance than that. So is what it is. A uh, bunch of pars here. Mm -hmm. So assuming I can in fact tap this one in. This hole's a weird one. I don't know why, but it seems to be so difficult. It is. It can be strangely strangely hard. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> that T sign looking at you, 289, doesn't yeah. make you feel any better. It's yeah. like, dang, I when should I have be a getting this driver in my hand. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so hole 14, par four. And what's the play here? The play here is basically whatever you do, do not undercommit or saw off a hyzer because that is out of bounds. So, whatever you do, you want to put something out into the middle, straight to hyzer flip, or with the big right to left wind we have today, the option to go all the way wide outside to the right big hyzer is wide open. Yeah, this is only really a play in. These conditions. These, yeah, in, in the kind of wind that we had today. But uh, with this being only a 600 or so foot par four, uh, distance isn't high priority here. Mm -hmm. It's It uh, doesn't take much to put yourself in position. Yeah, you got to throw it over 400 feet. But, um, but really, like you said, number one is just don't go in the road. Blake putting this out on a really nice angle. Never a doubt. He's going to like that. I am choosing to go up the gut backhand. I mean, I looked at the hyzer, but it's easier for me to commit to a straight shot. 
Yeah, and this was beautifully thrown. Great shape. Crushed. Oh, make the cameraman turn. Yeah. That's how you know you threw it pretty good. <laughs> I made Chris turn, guys. Yeah, that's great. All right, so Emerson trying to do a little baby forehand flex here. He's going Chupacabra. Yeah, looks like a good line. Oh, little, wow. Little wind spicy. is carried it. Yeah, and that he's got a headwind coming back. I undercommitted just slightly here, but I'm trying to play it slightly short, mm -hmm. short and right, um, because of the wind. So I'm I'm happy with that. Blake's going justice and getting good ground play there. Mm -hmm. Similar distance to you, but like you said, exact opposite wind. Yeah, I really liked where your disc landed, yep. so I just said I'm just gonna throw it right over there, give myself a little tailwind for birdie. Yeah, yeah, I knew you you had the same mindset on that that approach. So well done. Emerson, keeping pace. Yep. That was basically a death putt. I mean, not like this OB <laughs> behind it, but like the putt he would have had left if Absolutely, he would have missed the basket man. there. Yeah, the amount of speed and commitment that he put on that. Um, but then again, it was just tracking towards center basket, you know, center chain the whole time. So, I mean, hats off. Emerson mm -hmm. has been putting well all three rounds. So here it is to maintain a one-stroke lead with four to play. Tensions are staying high. That's a bunch of birdies for our lead card. Plastic is very premium. I think it's the quality of plastic. It's unlike any other plastic that you'll find in the industry. It's something I can consistently trust. You're going to want to put multiple discs in your bag. You can only say so much where they have to eventually just try it themselves and see. Hole 15, another multi-option. The biggest gap available to us is going to be the sidearm towards the road and then a skip toward the basket. With the right to left wind though, that road can seem a little bit more hairy than it would in calm conditions, but you are going to be ripping on a firebird here. Yeah, trying to put that just inside the tree and I did not like that. It just came out just like slow, weak. Um, not excited about that, but honestly still circles edge, so yeah. not bad. Emerson, better, but gets, yeah, just like more ground play than mm -hmm. you would really expect. So it's a one stroke battle here, four, four holes left. And, you know, again, shout out to everybody who had a part in putting this tournament together. This is the, oh, look at this reaction. Off the tree. What a shot. Nice Parked work, Blake. Um, this is this tournament's first year as an A tier. So huge congrats um, to to everybody who was involved in that. Oh, and Casey leaking into that road. Unnecessary. For sure. Okay, I'm trying to get this one high enough. And I nearly did with that tailwind. Just too much. Emerson to tie it back up. Yeah. And, you know, going back to what I was saying, this is first first year as an A tier at this event. And... Oh, he nearly knocks it down. Uh, that means big payouts. Mm -hmm. These guys went all out. Um, and so we've got Lone Star Disc to thank for that. Uh, a handful of others. What was that reaction? That putt just gave me my first bogey of the weekend. Another OB. That, that didn't look like a bad putt to me. Was that pull? It like was that? It was just off the left side of the pole, but it was a little bit of a right-to-left wind, and I, I just didn't quite snap it as much as I needed, and gotcha. I, I, I'm i actually really kind of mind-blown that I just did that. Dang. Yeah, I mean, you made contact with the pole. And... Not cool. Okay, so hole 16. Um, I, I see three main options. You can go low flex forehand, uh, some sort of backhand. There are a couple different like mm -hmm. angles and ways you can play that. And then big hyzer up and around. And with the wind, 
um, kind of coming off of kind of our behind slash right shoulder. Um, sorry, that's a confusing way to say it. It's kind of a right to left tailwind mm-hmm. is what I'm trying to say. And so that brings that big tall hyzer into play um, to the point where I'm going to go ahead and take it. Are you going overstable or kind of medium stability here? Um, four on the scale of one being flippy and five being the most overstable. Okay. I'm going with a number four. Mm-hmm. Okay, a nice little bump from that rail. I was, I was wondering what exactly happened there. You definitely that's... landed closer than I thought. Yeah, no, that's a it's a good shot and a good reaction. So, um, Emerson putting this on a on a nice line. Oh, ah, just, just like a, a backwards jump. Yeah, dud of a of a skip on. I'm that. gonna say I'll show you how to throw through the trees instead of over them. Yeah, this this was a cool line. Skip shot with a PD. Yeah, I like you, that. You hear me say "sick line." That was that was cool. That was that was very pure, very clean. Hit the line. It was a. Do you hit it just how you wanted? Yes, I, mean, I I really couldn't ask for much more there. Yeah, I got the big skip I was expecting, and I'm inside the circle. Okay, so this is a big putt for Emerson. What is he? Forty five feet. Mm-hmm. Jam wow. session, dude. Unreal. Clutch, beautiful putt. Man, that thing like. I, I I got to take some putting lessons from Emerson, man. Like he's been on it all weekend long. I said it in the front night. If there's one thing Emerson knows how to do, that's how to win. Sure. Yeah. The man is clutch. I'm getting a little bounce back birdie. Yep. Yep. Good birdie there. Still not in love with it. It felt like I put myself backwards just to bring myself back to where I was already. Of course. It's an important little 15 footer for me. And, um, there's a there's a big battle for third going on. Mm-hmm. There we, is. Uh, we aren't seeing the rest of the scores out there, but there are a, a handful of other players who are right in that same kind of 27 under par range, 28 under par range, um, right there next to you and Blake. So, okay, so hole 17. Um, the play is going to be to put a forehand with an overstable disc out to the left, let it make contact with the road, and flare in. It's it's 370. And so with the tailwind coming right to left, it's the same, same wind as the last hole. I know that a distance driver is going to go past the basket. And so I'm going Firebird. Came out nice. A little bit of a soft skip, but I'm, I'm happy. I'm mm. inside the circle. So then Emerson... Is going distance driver. He pulled out the distance driver, and I was thinking, okay, like he might be able to just kind of spin this, throw it soft. Looking good. And it was a good line, but he did... Kind of what I was expecting mm-hmm. with that with that distance drive where it pushed a little bit long. So now he's got 35 feet into a headwind. You you take this little little backhand round. Yeah, I'm trying to get like the slight hyzer glider out of this one. I just pulled it a little too wide. If I would have put that inside the gap, it would have been inside the circle and definitely on the dance floor. But yeah. You got like 40 feet left putting out the out of bounds. This whole child's play for Blake. Just take out the max, put it out over that road. Oh, just come like gets the nose down, mm-hmm. just kind of heads into the ground. That, mm-hmm. That's not something. I, I mean, eight eight times out of ten, like Blake's gonna be parked on this hole. Goes justice on the upshot, and the wind is killing this thing. Wow, it doesn't cross either. That is so unfortunate. Blake has played as such a solid tournament, and second to last hole, man, you hate to see it, but. He's going to snuggle this approach up nice. Good composure there. You know, just throw a smooth backhand and stop the bleeding. Oh, why do you keep doing that? <laughs> At left to right crosswind, I, I was putting it on the hyzer, committing high, but not actually committing. Yeah. Okay, huge putt from Emerson. Can he make another outside the circle putt? A little bit of headwind here. Makes contact with chains. Okay, so then that leaves that leaves it up to me, and I told myself this putt is for the win. Mm-hmm. As you should. Up two with one to go. I make this putt. Yeah, I've got two strokes going into the last hole. Happy to see that one get over the And road. And I wasn't surprised either because I knew that you knew you needed it and you weren't taking it for granted. Yeah. And now I'm left with a pretty nervy putt for par after a little roll away. Yeah, and this is a big deal. This this could be 
really important in your battle for third. Get on that podium. And I really have no idea. I just hate bogeys that much. <laughs> for sure. For sure. I feel you there. Emerson, not pleased. I, I mean, can't no. blame the guy. No, I mean, I feel for him. Like, he, he he's, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he, he's probably thinking, man, like, what did I do all that work for? Mm -hmm. Like, what did I throw all those sick drives and all those sick, put, sick putts for just to come up short, you know? And so... I mean, hats off. Like, I've got so much respect for Emerson's game and, like, what a battle. Like, what a push. And I'm, I'm talking like it's not, a, you know, that's already over. It is not already over. I got to come clean on this drive because if you can nick a tree, you can easily find out of bounds on the left Absolutely. side of the road. Going Luster Destroyer, just smacking on Annie. And now we're going to wrap it up, essentially, unless Emerson can ring this, ring this basket for an ace. Yep. Yep, Emerson's got to ace it. Gets it high and aggressive. Yeah, to try to just give it a didn't chance, have it. But yeah, yeah, it hits a tree. And, and so now, you know, all Emerson can hope for is try to throw it in mm. and then hope something weird happens. Um, I let mine leak out to the right. I was scared of putting too much hyzer to the point that the wind would take it left over the road so i just kind of threw it dead straight and never got it left man we just saw the exact same thing from blake two holes in a row just got that nose down made contact with the ground way too early um but yeah i really can't speak enough like huge hats off to emerson he made a huge push today definitely made me nervous and so great shooting out there em oh Enjoyed. looks like we missed my putt sure I had a pretty deep, deep range any tailwind putt that hit off the top of the basket. <laughs> you made a great bid on that putt. And yeah. now I'm left with about a 25-footer similar to Blake's distance into the headwind to stay tied for third with four other people. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Come on, KZ. There it is. Nice hit. Weighed off my shoulders. Yeah, Not that I knew what the scores were worth, sure. but like... You know, no, that's that's a good way to cap off your tournament. Emerson tapping in for second. Well played, Emerson. Good shooting out here. And I'm going I'm going back to back. Crush on the concho. First Absolutely. Place. Yeah, great way to start off the season for me. I'm 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 thrilled for that. Of course. I mean, I got third and I played like twenty points above my rating. Thirty points above my rating. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, just absolutely awesome. annihilated the course and Emerson as well, essentially. Yeah, averaging somewhere in the neighborhood of, of ten seventy. And, you know, like I said, made this this final round way more exciting than I than I hoped to, but um, but man, what a what a fun show. I mean that was that was exciting. And and really a pleasure to play with Blake two rounds. Uh, really cool to kind of get a good look at his game and Super nice guy. I loved playing with Blake, Emerson, and you. We we played all three rounds together, you, Emerson, yeah. and I. But yep. it was an absolute fun weekend. Shout out to Lone Star Disc, the presenting sponsor, and Low Putt, the Veals, for putting this event on. This event keeps getting better and better every year. And take a look at those hot rounds. Top top five scores, all double digits. Unreal. Boom. Yeah, hot scores out here and a bunch of good ratings. Huge shout out to GK Pro for having me and Casey. It's been a, a blast doing laying down some commentary for you guys. So thanks for tuning in. And any last words, Casey? Send it, bub. <laughs> All right, signing off, Joel Freeman and Casey White.